In the oldest forests, where shadows play and whispers echo, people's greed has no limits. They bring loud machines that cut into the earth without care. Chainsaws roar, drowning out the birds and leaves. Ancient trees that have stood for hundreds of years fall in minutes. Their last creaks are lost in the noise of what some call progress. The forest floor, once full of life, turns to mud with deep tracks. As homes are destroyed, animals big and small are left with nowhere to go. But it's not just cutting trees that hurts these ancient woods. Careless campers leave piles of trash, with plastic choking streams and harming animals. People on off-road vehicles crash through the plants, not caring what they destroy. Even those who say they love nature often leave their mark. Names cut into trees, flowers picked for short-lived bouquets, rocks and pine cones taken home. Each small act is a tiny hurt that builds up over time, weakening the forest spirit. The air gets heavy with smoke and sharp smells. Rivers turn cloudy with dirt and poison. The very heartbeat of the woods slows, its magic fading day by day. But nature isn't helpless. In the deepest, darkest parts of the forest, something old is waking up. At first, the signs are small. Paths seem to change, making people walk in circles. Shadows move on their own. Eyes shine in the bushes, there and gone in a blink. The air feels heavy, full of watching and growing anger. Then, the true terror begins. Welcome to Freaky Folklore, the podcast where we discover horrifying legends across the world and tell terrifying tales of monsters both ancient and modern. This week we're discussing the Leshy, a benevolent guardian of the forest, until you disrespect its domain or threaten the natural balance it protects. Then this seemingly gentle spirit transforms into a terrifying force of vengeance, capable of unleashing the full wrath of nature upon those who dare to desecrate its woodland realm. This show is part of the EerieCast Podcast Network. Find more terrifying tales at EerieCast.com, such as Destination Terror. You can listen to a new episode every week as I take you to horrifying destinations both real and mythical. Be sure to follow us on Spotify or your favorite podcasting service. You can leave an honest review on iTunes, too. The more we get, the more we grow, and hopefully the more monsters we can explore. You can now find Freaky Folklore videos on YouTube as well. If you would like to submit an encounter or suggestions for future episodes, you can email them to carmencarrion at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Twitter or Instagram for information on future episodes. Misty dawn wrapped the Balkan forest in a soft blanket. It crept between old trees and curled around twisted roots. The fog muffled the forest's morning sounds making bird calls and animal rustles seem far away and dreamlike. Beams of early sunlight cut through the leaves, lighting up tiny specks of dust that danced in the air. Huge oaks and beeches stood like quiet guardians, their thick trunks marked by many years of weather. Mossy rocks poked out from the bushes, leftover bits of forgotten people now taken back by nature. Delicate ferns opened in the dappled light, their leaves dotted with dew that sparkled like tiny gems. For thousands of years, this old forest had stayed untouched, quietly watching time pass. Layers of fallen leaves had made rich, dark soil full of hidden life. The air felt heavy with old stories and secrets, as if all the memories of plants and animals from long ago hung in the misty quiet. Here, in this ancient safe place, Nature's rhythms played out in perfect harmony, a delicate balance that lasted since the beginning of time. Until today. The peace shattered as the first logging truck rumbled down the hastily carved dirt road, its engine a slovenly growl that sent birds scattering from the roosts. Behind it came a convoy of vehicles, more trucks, pickups loaded with men, and the lumbering shapes of heavy machinery. Dragomir Novak, the site foreman, stepped out of the lead vehicle. 
his boots squelching in the damp earth. Dragomir was a rugged man with weathered features, his sturdy frame clad in well-worn work clothes that spoke of years in the logging industry. While his keen eyes surveyed the forest with the calculating gaze of someone who saw profit rather than beauty in nature, he took a deep breath, savoring the scent of pine and possibility. To him, the towering trees weren't marvels of nature, but dollar signs waiting to be harvested. All right, let's move. He barked, his voice cutting through the morning stillness. I want the first cuts made before noon. We're on a tight schedule here. The crew began to disperse, unloading equipment with practiced efficiency. Chainsaws revved to life. Their harsh buzz, an alien intrusion in the primeval quiet. As the first workers approached the tree line, Milo Kovac paused, an uneasy feeling settling in his gut. Milo, a lean man in his late twenties, with tousled hair and deep-set green eyes, stood out from his rougher colleagues. His work clothes were clean and barely broken in, hinting at his recent career change from office work to logging. A faint scar on his left cheek caught the dim light as he frowned sensing something amiss. He could have sworn the forest had grown darker, the mist thickening around them. A chill wind whispered through the leaves, carrying what sounded almost like words. Wicked intruders. Milo, get that feller buncher moving! Dragomir's shout snapped him back to reality. Shaking off his unease, Milo climbed into the cab of the massive machine. As its engine roared to life, he couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched by countless unseen eyes. The first tree fell with a thunderous crack that echoed through the Balkan forest. Milo winced, his hand tightening on the controls of the feller buncher. Even if he worked twenty years in this business, he didn't think he would ever get used to that sound. Keep it moving, Milo. Dragomir's gruff voice crackled over the radio. We're already behind schedule. Milo sighed, guiding the massive machine towards the next target, a towering European beech that had probably stood for centuries. Its gnarled branches reached towards the sky, leaves rustling in a breeze he couldn't feel inside the climate-controlled cab. As the mechanical arm extended... Milo could have sworn he saw the tree shudder. He blinked, shaking his head. Lack of sleep, that's all it was. This contract with Slantazuma logging was the biggest his crew had ever landed, he was told, and the pressure was getting to all of them. The feller buncher's saw bit into the ancient trunk, and for a moment, Milo thought he heard a scream. He jerked back, heart pounding but there was only the whine of the saw and the creaking of wood. Milo, what's the holdup? Dragomir, again, impatient as ever. Nothing, boss. Just thought I heard something. The beach toppled with a groan, crashing through the underbrush. As Milo began to process the fallen giant, movement caught his eye. At the edge of the clearing, between two younger pines, stood something. Tall as a man, but somehow part of the forest itself, with eyes that glowed like sunlight through leaves. It stared directly at Milo, and in that moment, he felt the weight of every tree he had felled since he began this job three months ago. Then it was gone, leaving Milo to wonder if he'd seen anything at all. But deep in the forest... Something ancient stirred, awakened by the taste of exhaust and the scream of saws. As the morning went on, the forest filled with patches of sunlight and the noise of machines. The crew had been working for hours, felling trees with ruthless efficiency. Dragomir stood at the edge of the clearing, a satisfied smirk on his face as he watched another massive beach topple. A loud scream cut through the noise of the machines. Dragomir spun around, his eyes widening as he saw Andre, one of the younger workers, stumbling out of the tree line. 
The man's face was pale, his eyes wide with terror. The, the harvester! Andre gasped, pointing back the way he'd come. It just... it moved on its own! Dragomir's brow furrowed. What are you talking about? Before Andre could respond, a deafening crash echoed through the forest. The ground trembled beneath their feet as the massive harvester burst through the underbrush, its mechanical arms swinging wildly. There was no one in the cab. Workers scattered in panic as the machine lumbered into the clearing, its saw blade whirring menacingly. It moved with an unnatural purpose, as if guided by an unseen hand. Get out of the way! Dragomir bellowed, diving to the side as the harvester's arm swept past, missing him by inches. The machine continued its rampage, toppling equipment and narrowly missing fleeing workers. As quickly as it had started, the harvester suddenly ground to a halt in the center of the clearing, its engine sputtering into silence. In the eerie quiet that followed, Dragomir could have sworn he heard laughter, not human, but a sound like rustling leaves and creaking wood, echoing from the depths of the forest. As the dust settled, the crew gathered, shaken and bewildered. Milo approached the harvester cautiously, peering into the empty cab. This is impossible, he muttered. The key isn't even in the ignition. Dragomir surveyed the scene, taking in the destruction and the terrified faces of his crew. For the first time, a flicker of doubt crossed his mind. What had they awakened in this ancient forest? He stood silently for a moment, his jaw clenched as he processed the scene before him. The harvester sat innocently now, as if it hadn't just rampaged through their work site of its own accord. He could see the fear in his workers' eyes, the way they glanced nervously at the surrounding forest. But then his gaze fell on the felled trees, the precious timber they had already collected. He thought of the lucrative contract with Slanta Zuma logging, of the bonus he had been promised if they finished ahead of schedule. His resolve hardened. All right, that's enough gawking. Dragomir barked, his voice cutting through the tense silence. It was just a mechanical failure. These things happen with old equipment. He pointed at two of the mechanics. You two check over that harvester. The rest of you, back to work. We've lost enough time as it is. Milo stepped forward, his face pale. But sir, what if... What if, Milo? Dragomir sneered. You think the forest is angry with us? That some fairy tale monster is going to come get us? He laughed harshly. I didn't take you for a superstitious old woman. Dragomir's eyes swept over the crew, his voice dropping to a dangerous growl. We have a job to do here. A very profitable job. I won't let some freak accident or your childish fears get in the way of that. Now move. As the workers reluctantly dispersed, Dragomir turned back to survey the forest. For just a moment, he thought he saw movement in the shadows between the trees, a flash of green eyes. But he blinked, and it was gone. Shaking his head, Dragomir pushed the unease aside. There was money to be made, and he'd be damned if he let anything stop him. What is the spookiest setting you can imagine for telling or hearing scary stories? Is it an old abandoned house with a history of hauntings? Or maybe it's a cemetery at night with the wind whispering through the trees? But wait, there is one place that may be even more terrifying. You guessed it, the woods. Picture this. You're deep in the heart of an ancient forest. Towering trees loom all around, their branches reaching out like gnarled fingers. You can barely see ten feet ahead, the thick undergrowth hiding who knows what just beyond your sight. Every snap of a twig makes you jump. Was that just the wind? Or something else? The leaves whisper secrets above your head, and somewhere in the distance, an owl lets out a haunting call. Shadows dance at the edge of your vision, 
One moment, you swear you saw a figure dart between the trees. The next, it's gone. Tricks of light or something more sinister. Remember all those old stories? The ones about witches and candy houses? Or wolves that walk like men? They all happened in places like this. Makes you wonder if there's a reason our ancestors feared the deep, dark woods. And the silence. It's almost deafening. You realize just how far you are from the nearest town. From any help. Out here, you're on your own. Now there's something you ought to know about these woods. Have you ever heard of the Leshy? Deep in the heart of Slavic forests, there's said to be a spirit. Not just any spirit, mind you, but the very guardian of the woods. The natives call it Leshy, the forest lord. Picture a creature as old as the trees themselves. Some say he looks like a man, but wild and overgrown, with hair and a beard made of living moss and twigs. Others say he can change his size at will, one moment as tall as the mightiest oak, the next no bigger than a blade of grass. The Leshy knows every tree, every animal, every secret path in his domain. They say he can lead travelers astray with his tricks, luring them deeper and deeper into the wilderness until they're helplessly lost. But here's the thing, the Leshy isn't evil, not exactly. He's a force of nature, unpredictable as a storm. Treat the forest with respect and he might just help you. Disrespect his realm and well, let's just say you might never find your way out again. Imagine a spirit that embodies the very essence of the forest. That's the Leshy. This enigmatic creature has been a staple of Slavic folklore for generations, representing both the wonder and the danger of the wilderness. The Leshy is no ordinary forest dweller. His ability to change size and form adds to his mystique and unpredictability. In the stories passed down through the ages, the Leshy plays a complex role it's seen as a guardian of the forest, fiercely protective of the plants and animals under its care. But it's also known as a trickster, often leading unwary travelers astray in its domain. The relationship between humans and the Leshy in these tales is a delicate one. Those who show respect for the forest might find the Leshy to be a helpful guide. But woe betide anyone who damages the woods or hunts carelessly they might find themselves hopelessly lost, or worse, victim to the Leshy's cunning. This forest spirit serves as a powerful reminder of nature's dual nature, beautiful yet dangerous, nurturing yet wild. The Leshy's presence in Slavic mythology speaks to a deep connection with the natural world and a recognition of forces beyond human control. Imagine trying to describe a creature that embodies the very essence of the forest. That's the challenge faced by generations of storytellers when it comes to the Leshy. This shape-shifting spirit's appearance is as diverse and changeable as the woodland itself. In many tales, the Leshy is portrayed as a towering figure, able to reach heights surpassing the tallest trees. His eyes are said to gleam with an otherworldly emerald green light, reflecting the verdant world he inhabits. But what truly sets him apart is his hair and beard, described as a living tangle of leaves, grass, and forest debris. Interestingly, some Belarusian traditions offer a more unusual depiction. They describe the Leshy with flattened rib-like features, a long triangular beard, a single eye, and one leg always positioned forward, a truly otherworldly visage that speaks to the spirit's supernatural nature but here's where it gets even more intriguing. The Leshy is a master of disguise. This forest guardian can take on the form of any woodland creature, be it a sly fox, a soaring hawk, or a powerful bear. This shape-shifting ability allows the Leshy to move unseen through his domain, watching over both hunters and hunted alike. This chameleonic nature makes the Leshy as elusive as the play of shadows in a dense forest. Just when you think you've spotted him, he might transform into a gnarled old tree or vanish into the undergrowth. 
The Leshy, like many mythical beings, goes by many names across Slavic cultures. In Russia, he's known as Leshy or Leshyi. Polish folklore calls him Leshy, spelt L-E-S-Z-Y, or Borowy. Ukrainians speak of the Lisovic, while Bulgarians whisper about Godsnik. Most of these I probably didn't pronounce correctly, but you do see the difference in the names. This variety of names, including Borovoy, Lesnik, Lesovoy, and many others, highlights just how widespread and significant this forest spirit is throughout Slavic lands. Now let's talk about what makes the Leshy truly awe-inspiring. His powers. Imagine a being who can not only shapeshift at will, but also command every creature in the forest. That's the Leshy. He can manipulate the very environment around him, growing plants, creating illusions, and even summoning storms to protect his domain. But the Leshy's powers are a double-edged sword. While he can offer healing and safe passage to those who respect the forest, he's equally capable of unleashing his wrath on those who don't. There are even tales of a fearsome leshy dog, a monstrous guardian with glowing eyes that patrols the forest boundaries. What's fascinating is how the leshy has persisted in our modern imagination. From the Witcher series to popular video games like the Elder Scrolls, the leshy continues to captivate audiences. In these modern interpretations, we see the complexity of the leshy preserved. He's portrayed as both a protector and a potential threat much like nature itself. This enduring presence of the Leshy in contemporary media speaks to our continuing fascination with the natural world and its mysteries. Even in our technologically advanced society, the idea of a powerful enigmatic forest spirit resonates deeply. And so, if you should find yourself wandering in an old, dense forest, pay close attention to your surroundings. If the trees seem to whisper secrets in the wind, if shadows move in ways they shouldn't, or if you feel eyes upon you when there's no one there, you might be in the Leshy's domain. Remember, the forest spirit values respect above all else. So tread lightly, take only memories, and leave only footprints. For those who honor the woods may find in the Leshy a powerful ally, but those who disrespect his realm, well, they might find themselves on a path from which there is no return. After all, in the deep dark heart of the forest, not all who wander are truly lost. Some are simply led astray by a mischievous spirit who guards his home with cunning and might. So the next time you hear an unexplained rustle in the undergrowth or spy a flicker of movement just beyond your vision, ask yourself, is it merely the wind and wildlife? Or could it be the Leshy, watching, waiting, judging? Over the next several days, tensions in the camp grew. Milo found himself reflecting on how he had ended up here. He'd never wanted this life, but with a sick mother and younger siblings to support, the high pay of logging was too tempting to resist. Every tree he felled felt like a betrayal of the nature he'd loved as a boy, but he told himself it was necessary. Dragomir, on the other hand, reveled in the destruction. Son of a wealthy timber baron, he'd grown up seeing forests as nothing but profit margins. His father's lessons had been harsh. Weakness and sentimentality had no place in business. Dragomir was determined to prove himself to expand the family empire no matter the cost. As night fell on the fifth day, the true horror began. It started with whispers in the dark, words just on the edge of comprehension that sent chills down the men's spines. They began to report seeing impossible things, trees that moved, shadows that weren't cast by anything visible, eyes gleaming in the underbrush that vanished when looked at directly. Then, people began to disappear. The sun rose over the logging camp. It was strangely quiet, with no machine noise. Workers huddled in small groups, talking softly. Everyone felt that something wasn't right. 
It was Milo who first noticed Alexander's absence. The young chainsaw operator had been eager, perhaps too eager, to prove himself. They found his abandoned chainsaw at the base of a massive oak, still slick with morning dew. Alexander! Milo called, his voice echoing unnaturally in the too quiet forest. Then he saw them, a pair of work boots peeking out from behind the tree. Milo's relief quickly turned to horror as he rounded the oak. The boots stood upright, as if Alexander were still wearing them, but there was no sign of the young man. Instead, thin, pale roots had grown through the leather, anchoring the boots to the forest floor. The roots pulsed slightly, as if alive, and looked as old and gnarled as the ancient trees surrounding them. Dragomir arrived, his face paling at the sight. Impossible, he muttered, reaching out to touch the root-infested boots. He jerked his hand back with a hiss. The leather had rotted away at his touch, crumbling like something that had been there for decades. Before they could process this impossible scene, a shout came from the direction of the vehicles. They found Nicola's logging truck parked haphazardly at the edge of the clearing, the driver's door hanging open. Nicola himself was nowhere to be seen, but the interior of the truck cab told a chilling story. Every surface, the seats, dashboard, even the steering wheel, was covered in a thick carpet of vibrant green moss. It grew before their very eyes, creeping across the metal and plastic with unnatural speed. The air inside the cab was heavy with the earthly scent of growth and decay, as if the forest itself had claimed the vehicle. Milo reached out, mesmerized, only to have Dragomir slap his hand away. Don't touch it, the foreman growled, but his voice trembled. As the remaining workers gathered around, a cold wind whispered through the trees. For a moment, Milo could have sworn he heard laughter carried on the breeze. The forest seemed to be awakening, and it was hungry for retribution. Panic set in. Some of the men tried to flee, only to find themselves walking in circles, the forest paths shifting around them. Those who pushed through the undergrowth emerged with hundreds of tiny cuts, as if every leaf had turned razor sharp. Milo watched in horror as the forest's fury claimed his co-workers one after another. Some fell while fleeing, others as they bravely tried to continue their work. Piat was alone, marking trees for cutting when it happened. Milo saw it from a distance, too far to help close enough to witness the horror unfold. A massive oak, ancient and gnarled, seemed to shudder. Its bark split with a sound like tearing flesh, revealing a dark, cavernous maw lined with splinter teeth. Piot turned, his scream cut short as roots erupted from the ground, wrapping around his legs and arms. In a horrifying instant, the tree pulled Piot in, Milo watched, paralyzed, as his friend's body contorted, bones cracking audibly as he was stuffed into the impossible opening. Piot's eyes, wide with terror, met Milo's for a split second before the bark slammed shut. The oak shuddered once more, a bulge moving up its trunk like something being swallowed. Then stillness. Only a dark stain on the grass remained where Piot had stood. Milo pleaded with Dragomir. We have to stop this. The forest is alive. It's killing us. But Dragomir's face hardened, his eyes flashing with anger and denial. Nonsense, he spat. I won't let superstition and cowardice shut down this operation. Get back to work, all of you or you'll wish the trees had gotten you instead. It was dusk when the birds came for Stefan. The flock descended without warning, a writhing mass of feathers and razor-sharp beaks. Their eyes glowed an unnatural green, filled with malevolent intelligence. Stefan's screams pierced the air, 
as the birds enveloped him. Milo and the others rushed to help, but it was like fighting a living tornado of claws and feathers. Blood sprayed in arterial arcs as beaks found flesh, tearing and rending. Milo caught glimpses of Stefan through the swarm, fingers stripped to bone, an eye plucked out, ribbons of skin peeling away. The birds worked with terrifying precision, as if guided by a single cruel mind. When it was over, the flock dispersed as quickly as it had come, leaving behind only scraps of cloth and a red mist hanging in the air. Of Stefan, nothing recognizable remained. The forest fell silent once more, but the message was clear. Nature's vengeance had only just begun. Through it all, Dragomir refused to stop. He drove the remaining men harder, his eyes wild with a mix of greed and fear. We're almost done, he would shout. Push through and we'll be rich. Terror gripped the men, torn between fleeing and facing the forest wrath alone. With the job nearly finished and the lure of substantial pay, they chose the devil they knew over the unknown horrors that might await them in the woods. On the final night, as Milo huddled in his tent, the forest fell deathly silent. Then came a sound like the groaning of a thousand ancient trees. The ground shook, and Milo emerged to a scene of nightmarish chaos. The forest came alive as one. Trees tore free from the earth, their limbs intertwining to form a monstrous towering figure. Its massive frame loomed over the camp, a giant made of bark and branch. Emerald flames blazed in its hollow eyes, while gnarled roots formed a gaping mouth, bristling with wooden fangs. This was nature's wrath given form, an ancient guardian awakened to defend its domain. Dragomir stood before the monster, chainsaw in hand, screaming defiance. Nature's guardian beast regarded him for a moment, then swept a massive arm down. Roots burst from the ground, wrapping around Dragomir. He screamed as he was pulled into the earth, his cries turning wet and choked. As roots pushed into his mouth, his eyes, every orifice. In seconds, only a hand remained above ground, twitching once before going still. Milo watched in horror as the forest claimed his remaining co-workers one by one, each meeting a fate as gruesome as Dragomir's. Trees swallowed some whole, while others were torn apart by swarms of creatures or simply vanished into the mist, their screams echoing through the woods, until silence fell and Milo found himself utterly alone. Milo fell to his knees, sure his end had come, but the creature turned its burning gaze on him, and a voice like rustling leaves filled his mind. You, who knew better but chose greed, will bear witness, live, and tell others what becomes of those who disrespect the forest. With that, the creature dissolved back into the trees. Milo found himself on the forest's edge, the logging camp gone, as if it had never existed. He looked around, stunned. There was no one left. Thank you for listening to Freaky Folklore, the podcast about mankind's horrifying legends and myths. Don't forget to follow Freaky Folklore on Spotify and iTunes. If you can, leave the show an honest review on iTunes to help us grow. Freaky Folklore is part of the EerieCast Podcast Network, the home for listeners who love to feel scared. Go to EerieCast.com to find other terrifying podcasts, such as Destination Terror, hosted by me, Carmen Carrion. If you would like to submit an encounter or suggestions for future episodes, you can email them to CarmenCarrion at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Twitter or Instagram. 
Until next time, stay safe out there, because this world is a strange one.